Welcome to The Disciplined Life. I'm Aria. And I'm Coda. And we use our experience as a married couple living in a domestic disciplined marriage to talk about the ups and downs of implementing authority structure and domestic discipline into modern relationships. Let's do it. Welcome in, everyone. On today's podcast, we are going to be talking about the idea of how to view progress without turning it into uh, perfectionism. So we're kind of revisiting perfectionism, but with a different take. But before we get started, if you are not already, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. You can also leave this video a like, comment, let us know what you think. If you want to support the channel further, a link to our Patreon is down below. You can get the podcast in video form as well as a bonus um, post show every week and other content. So um, let's jump into the topic. Jump right in. <laughs> My favorite topic, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you love talking about perfectionism. I do these days. I didn't always <laughs> used to, but yes, you're, you're absolutely right. So this topic kind of came to me when I was um, hearing a lot of feedback from some of our patrons about the podcast and I realized that I was giving the wrong impression about the progress that I've made um, as a taken in hand wife. I have often said that I have made progress in certain areas, and I absolutely have, but I have made statements like, I don't struggle with this anymore, or I don't do this anymore. And I realized that what I mean by that and what it sounds like is are two different things. And so I realized that I was making it sound like I have 100% completely just stopped that behavior, stopped that attitude, stopped that action. And what I really mean is I've become proficient in um, displaying appropriate behavior in that area. So when I talk about proficiency, I um, don't know how many of you work in jobs where you have to set goals and your goals are based on a level of proficiency, not necessarily like you did it or you didn't do it. I worked in education. So when I would set goals for my students, when I would have parent teacher conferences, um, I worked in special education for a while. So we would have uh, individual education plans for some of our students and we would set goals with proficiency in mind and proficiency was never a 100% um, of the time proficiency. Typically we would uh, look for about 80 to 90 percent proficiency to consider that goal achieved. And so when I talk about I have achieved certain things for myself within our relationship, I, I consider about 90 percent proficiency to be um, my marker to consider that goal achieved. The perfect example that I have been thinking about uh, recently, uh, and I love the fact that you brought up uh, proficiency, uh, because uh, that's a term that I've thought a lot about uh, recently in every aspect. But now, how does this relate to your relationship? There may be some areas that you really do well. You are proficient. You know what? For a perfectionist, that was always, well, that's not good enough. I need to get everything up into this area. Well, here's the two realities. Number one, that's never going to happen. Number two, by striving for that, you actually make everything else that you're proficient in, they've proven this, worse. Because you're, you're trying to take all of those other things and fit them into this hole of perfectionism. And so how does that relate to your relationship? There's maybe some things right now that you're trying to do because proficient, the proficiency is not good enough for you that you're actually hurting. You're actually making things worse in your relationship by trying to shove all that through the hole of perfectionism rather than saying, you know what? Yes, we want the things that we're proficient and I'm not saying don't strive to make those things better. But let's realize that some of these things, they're proficient enough, they're good enough for us to uh, keep our relationship going, to keep our relationship healthy, and then we will strive little by little to make those things better. All that to say, we definitely don't want to give the impression to 
imply that you want to strive for 100% proficiency and if you don't hit that 100% mark that you've somehow failed because that is a perfectionism mindset that we have talked about in the past that is just not realistic and it's not conducive of the growth of your relationship. We talked last week all about growth and having a growth mindset. Um, I don't think we use that phrase, but it was essentially what we were talking about. And getting caught up in perfectionism and getting caught up in wanting to see a behavior completely eliminated or a new behavior completely um, established 100% of the time, that really does impede your ability to maintain that growth mindset to have productive growth and productive development within yourself and within your relationship. And I can't remember if I shared this on the last podcast that we talked about this, but I don't mind sharing it now. I've been working with a coach uh, to help me with perfectionism. And it's amazing when you start really looking at your perfectionism, you really look at it, you really see, and you start to open your eyes to it. You really pay attention to what it's doing. You don't realize how much it's crippling yourself from being able to accomplish some of the goals that you have. But more importantly, you don't realize what it's doing to your loved ones. I never thought perfectionism could harm a relationship like addictions. But the fact is, is that it does. As you start to look at it, you realize how crippling it is for yourself and your relationship and how um, the more I started to realize I needed to get rid of that and I started to shed some of those things, it was like, oh, wow, my relationship is actually getting better because I didn't realize that by trying to hold myself to that standard, there were some things that I didn't even realize I was holding Aria to that weren't fair because I was holding myself to unrealistic standards. And so, um, as she mentioned, the podcast that we talked about growth, that's why it's so important to understand where you are currently proficient. How are you slowly growing those things uh, to then be more than just uh, proficiencies? But are you seeing, again, that slow growth and not a regression? The regression is what you don't want. Now, you mentioned holding me to a standard because you were in a perfectionism mindset. I am not saying that's not valid, but I would challenge that just because I feel like to a, to an extent, you were actually holding a lower standard for me because you didn't feel like you were measuring up to the standard. So it was kind of this mindset of, well, I'm not measuring up to my standard. How can I hold her accountable to measure up? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I probably should have clarified that. What I meant by an unrealistic standard is it can go both ways. I didn't realize that an unrealistic standard could be a lower bar um, because, um, as she hit the nail on the head, because I wasn't able to get to my own standards that I had set for myself, the bar was lower for everyone else as well. Now, that sometimes can be good from the standpoint of that you that you say to yourself, well, I'm not holding unrealistic standards, so what's the problem with having this lower standard? Well, the problem was is that we that's where I say we weren't getting to where we wanted to go. So we had to figure out where is the healthy place in this area between the unrealistic high bar and low bar to where we can actually reach the goals that we're trying to get to, but it not be way out of reach, way out of reach, so. If your standards are too high, then they're unattainable for anyone. And from the taken in hand side, I can say that if the re if the standards are way too high, it looks like you are just trying to set me up for failure. It looks like you are baiting me into failing so that you can then have an excuse to punish. And that's not that that's not a good place to live emotionally because then I'm questioning the motivations of my head of household to um, wonder, you know, is he just looking for reasons to put me through punishment? But if the bar is too low, then I feel like he doesn't think that I'm capable of accomplishing much. He must really think pretty low of me to not believe that I'm capable of more. And so you really do need to kind of have that 
high standards, but not unrealistic standards. And and that's where I didn't realize that um, that was where dissension between us was being caused. It, it, w it made it tough because um, some the perfectionism was getting in the way and making me lowered my standard. And it's been amazing now that I have embraced the growth, that I've embraced proficiency and realized that I can't do everything perfectly. Um, it's amazing how much, in my opinion, I'm enjoying our relationship more. Um, and I'm realizing that, it, and it's not as hard to follow through with rules and with punishment, with resets, with it, it doesn't, I'll tell you what I didn't even realize was happening. And maybe some head of households are dealing with this. I look back now and realize one of the reasons it was hard to hold the standard was, yes, I was holding myself to an unrealistic standard, but also I was just, because of that, I was exhausted. I was emotionally exhausted. And I thought that was just because of my work day. I thought that was because of my school day, a combination of both. And it was, no, it was my perfectionism. It was my mind that was causing me to, to be so tired. And so now by getting rid of that, um, I didn't even realize it was subconscious. I was dreading having to do punishments. So I was, let, I was letting her off. I was dreading doing resets. And so we'd go, ah, let's just skip this reset. And that's not to say that you look forward to it now. No, 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 no. It's like, oh, yes, we got a punishment. But I'm more willing, or I should say I, am, I have a better sense about me to follow through with those things. You look at it as a duty rather yes. than a... Like an death. obligation mm -hmm. as where it was before. And, and, and it's because... I'm slowly letting go of that perfectionism, realizing that uh, my relationship is better because of it, that I'm embracing uh, the areas that I need growth and I'm seeing that growth. And then the areas that, you know, those one or two things I excel in, I'm embracing those and realizing, hey, these are things that I need to put my efforts to to make our relationship better. And the areas that I'm proficient in, those are good enough for me to build on to build on, I'm not saying I'm just happy with where they are, but to build on and over time, even in the short time that we've, um, we've seen this growth since our boot camp, I'm like, wow, that's actually a lot more growth um, than, I, than I realized. Um, and that's, um, that's the key. Um, but I, did, I had no idea how much the perfectionism was just draining me emotionally. It's crazy. And I'm not saying I'm rid of it. I'm still working on it. And there are days, um, in fact, I think it was last week that Aria was with me and, and I was really, really tired. And it was because I had a day of just the perfectionism wore on me. And I went to bed pretty darn early um, because I was very tired. Would you consider yourself proficient since we kind of started this conversation about proficiency and what proficiency means? Where do you, I talked about how my level of proficiency for me to consider a habit no longer an issue or a positive habit developed, that my personal bar is about 90% proficiency. Um, where do you set that bar for yourself? I used to set it much higher, but it's much lower now and it may surprise you. 75%. Okay. 75% to me is proficient. Um, so do you consider yourself proficient at not having a perfectionism mindset almost, right now? Almost. Almost. <laughs> not quite. Almost. Well, that's almost. good. But I'm getting closer. I'm glad you asked that question because that was actually one of the first things my coach wanted me to define. And she said, I want you to define it because if I feel like it's too high, we need to adjust where you th see things proficient. And she didn't tell me where she would like the number. But where I originally had it was, sorry, 90%. <laughs> and she said, I think this needs to come down quite a bit. And so then just uh, this last week, she asked me, okay, where is your proficiency bar now? And I said 75. And she goes, that's the number that I was thinking of was where we wanted to get it to. I only so. say 90% because when I talk about proficiency, you know, one of the habits that I used to struggle with a lot was um, dealing with being very reactionary in my anger responses, whether that was in the form of things like road rage or um, confrontation or, you know, even with you, 
being argumentative, being disrespectful, those are things that I don't want a 75% proficiency rate on. I really right. do want to push that to a higher standard. Sure. Because those are very destructive habits. And that's the only reason I put 90% as my standard because of the habits are different. Well, and let me clarify a little bit. 75% is when I say proficient, that's in order to, to grow, to get them. It's not that, that my coach wanted me to just keep it at 75 and say, I'm good. I never want you to, <clears throat> to grow those, but to say, look, have realistic expectations. If something is at 75%, go, you know what? That's pretty good. That's proficient. And then you know how to grow it to 90% better. Okay. I think we're on the same page actually, because for me, for me to say I am proficient, that means I'm not actively having to think about and continue to have conscious growth in an area. Because for me, it's like, okay, once I hit 90%, then I can kind of put that habit onto autopilot and it's not to say that it's not continuing to develop it's just not requiring effort on my part to continue to develop interesting and 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 part of that i think is just because i'm i'm coming from the point of view being a, a musician of how uh, the the music world defines that so for me i i define it that way uh, they they define it again anywhere between 70 to 75 percent is proficiency with which means yes you are still having to monitor it so when you get to a 90 percent they consider that to be a level of what they they do call it believe it or not they do call it autopilot but they they what they mean is is that you've gotten enough training you've gotten enough experience where you're not having to necessarily do something daily where a proficiency person in order to keep even a certain level has to do it every single day. And that's what I was going to say is that it's not that I discredit the growth that I have or that I, you know, look at it if I'm at 80% and I look at it as like, man, I'm a failure because I'm not at that night. I don't look at it that way. If I get to 75 or 80%, I do notice that as positive growth and positive change. But it's at that point where it's like, it's not to the point where I can just autopilot this habit. Um, it is something that I'm still having to consciously think about. So for me, proficiency means that I don't have to consciously think about it. And it's not something that's coming up in our maintenance and, or in discipline very often. Yeah, that's good. That's, I mean, I think all of these things are, are good. And I think the point that, that I want to bring up real quick um, is you, you're going to have your own, we say this all the time, you define what proficiency is for you and what that growth looks like, but be very, very careful that you're not defining it in a perfect, you may, you may be a perfectionist and not even realize it, or you, because your perfectionism can bleed into that a little bit because you say, oh no, I know, I, I have a, I have a good, healthy, uh, range of proficiency, but maybe you're like proficiency is 95%. Well, maybe it's not. So what we're saying is, is just because I define proficiency as 70 to 75%, maybe you define it as 80, but try to think of, is this a healthy area of where I'm defining certain terms? Yeah. That's important. Um, that's why I say it's very important to uh, sit down with your partner and really try to, uh, figure out um, where you define, where you both define where proficiency is and what those terms mean to your relationship. Now, that is not to say that if I consider myself proficient in an area and I have gotten to the point where that skill can kind of be on autopilot, that's not to say that I don't go through phases where there, where I hit a bump and I may really struggle with that thing again for a little while. Um, you know, just talking about kind of those negative feelings of anger or disrespect, letting things that happen that make me angry then affect my behavior. I go through phases where I might have a week where I really struggle with that and then I have to kind of focus on that again. I don't consider myself in proficient. What, what's the opposite of 
not proficient. I actually have never anymore. been asked that before. Um, not good. <laughs> I don't consider myself <laughs> like not proficient in that area anymore, but that's the 5%. That's the 10% where it's still a struggle and I still have to think about it sometimes. But I still consider myself, hey, 95% of the time, 90% of the time, I'm good in this area. I might just have like two days a month where I really struggle and that's when discipline happens. That's when accountability happens because just because I'm proficient doesn't mean that I'm still not held accountable to displaying appropriate behavior in that area. Holding as a head of household, holding your taken in hand partner accountable does not mean that you are requiring perfectionism. It doesn't mean that just because they have a struggle in an area that they are proficient in. Maybe they do display that behavior 85, 90, 95% of the time, but they had a moment of weakness or they had a moment of struggle and they displayed the inappropriate behavior, whatever that is, for the purposes of this conversation, being disrespectful, right? It's not necessarily a good thing to look at and say, oh, they're respectful and have great behavior in this area 95% of the time, so I'm not going to hold accountability here. I don't think that's the right approach. I think that as the head of household, you can say, you know, 95% of the time they're good, but they really messed up here, and so accountability has to come in. And holding accountability doesn't mean that you're requiring perfection, and it doesn't mean that you are embedding perfectionism into your relationship by holding them accountable when they do mess up. Because I think that for us, Punishment and accountability are there to serve as a reminder, to serve as an opportunity to learn, and to serve as a consequence. It's not there to say, you know, you're not perfect and now you have to be punished because you're not perfect. And I don't think that you ever come to punishment with the idea of you messed up so you're not perfect so I'm, I have to put you through this punishment to make you more perfect. No, no, that's, ne that's never been. Even when I really struggled with perfectionism, that was never my uh, mindset um, there, at least consciously. I don't mm -hmm. think, I, maybe subconsciously, maybe, but I, I really don't think so. But I, I definitely think now that we've been I've been on this journey of trying to lick my perfectionism it's it also has been a lot better uh, when I punish Arya because I, I again I don't look at it as I'm trying to make her more perfect my thing is that I'm trying to help her uh, be better and reach goals develop the skills to make different decisions in the future and it's not because I wasn't perfect enough, it's because holding that accountability gives me the experience to develop into the wife he wants me to be, the person I wanna be. We've set these goals together. It's, it's not imposed goals. It's not, there's nothing in our relationship, in our goals, in our rules that I haven't agreed to and share the values towards achieving and that's that's key what she just said there you're you want to make sure that you've defined when I said defined terms earlier you define the goals and you make sure all of this is being done together because that could be an issue as well if, if you have one person in your relationship and it could be both of you but if you have one person in your relationship that is the perfectionist and you kind of let them set all of the there there's been no collaboration to uh, on this that can be a problem as well. And when you're setting your goals, talk about what does proficiency mean to both of you? Because, you know, I think that even recently we have had some miscommunications happen because my level of proficiency is a lot higher than your level of proficiency. And even what I mean when I say, you know, I am proficient in something and what you mean by that is different. So it's it's good to kind of get on the same page and get onto 
common terms of what these things mean in your relationship and what your goals are within that aspect. And I would go as far as to say head of households. You really need to talk about and to make sure is do you both understand and have a clear understanding of where the standard is and where it should be and head of households I think that falls a lot on you of trying to make sure that your partner understands this is the standard and this is why it's very important to ask the question about why the standard is there um, because if they don't understand why uh, then you'll, you're having a hard time for the, and they will have a hard time saying, well, is he even holding me to a standard at all? Which is what we realized was the issue is I didn't define the why enough. And then the light bulb finally went on and she went, oh, it's not that you don't have a standard. It's just that I thought the standard was in a different place or should have been in a different place. Because the position of head of household is really the position of leadership in the relationship. And so when you hold that position, you set the tone of the relationship and without clear communication without clear leadership it's very difficult to follow very difficult as a taken in hand wife to know where to go and the direction if i'm unsure about where those parameters are and if i haven't been given directive leadership so. Well, that was well said. <laughs> that was very well said. Yeah, so make. I think the big takeaways here is make sure that you sit down and you define terms. You uh, you figure out where you each of you's definition of proficiency and growth and perfectionism even. What what are your term and what what do you think of those? And then try to figure out. Okay, how do we shed the lens of perfectionism? and still try to be as proficient as possible and create growth. If you can define those, then I think um, that will, you'll find that your relationship really does start to grow. It really starts to go in the direction that you want and there's a clear line of communication that way. But the big thing there is, is to shed that perfectionistic lens and attitude. And, and by the way, that is not easy and it takes time, but we all can do it. I think you summed that up really nicely. Um, anyway, where was, I, I don't know if I have anything to add to that. I really don't. Um, That's very rare that I actually get an outro really good. So. It is. It is. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. We'll see you next time. See you later.